Well, it's so good to have you here uh, with us today. Thanks for joining us from wherever you are. We want to extend a really warm uh, welcome to you. If we haven't met before, my name uh, is Dubsy, and I am part of the team here at Clovey. And part of our time today is that I want to speak in, into the future of our church. And I want to ask a question. And the question is this, what do you see? When you dream about the now, when you dream about the future of Clovercrest Baptist Church, what do you see? And depending on what we see will impact what we do. Yet I wonder, have you ever like looked at an image with another person where one person sees one thing and another person sees something completely different? Let me give you some examples. Uh, There was a number puzzle that went around uh, online uh, a couple of weeks ago where there was these different numbers that appeared in this illusion. And it was fascinating watching different people comment on all the numbers they did see and didn't see along the way. It's up on your screen right now. Maybe some of you are looking at going, oh yeah, I see the two in the middle, I see the five. But do you see the, the three on the far left? Do you see the nine on the other side? Sometimes you don't see everything. We could be looking at the same picture at the same time but not necessarily see the same thing. Let's push it out a little bit further. Let's talk about fashion. There was a thing that went viral a few years ago around a dress. Was it white or gold, or was it black or blue? It kind of divided people. Matter of fact, it's going to divide us right now. Some of you are like, that is the best black and blue dress I have ever seen. Some of you are going, that is the best white and gold dress Uh, I have ever seen. I remember when this uh, was going around, we had someone in our office walk in with a checkered shirt that was black and blue. And I said, I really love your white and gold, you know, checks that you've got on today. He's like, Dubsy, it's black and blue. No, no, it's white and gold for me today. But we can be looking at the same image at the same time, but we can see it differently. And when one person sees uh, one thing and someone sees someone else, it can lead us to a place where we question the other person. We're like how, like, how do you see something that's different to me? Sometimes when one person sees another thing and someone sees something else, it can lead us to question or doubt what that person has actually seen. Yet when people see the same thing, it does a few things as well. It brings agreement. It brings alignment. It brings a sense of togetherness. And you know what? This idea of seeing the same thing, but seeing something different isn't just contained to images. Matter of fact, it goes to all spheres of life. Matter of fact, you could be looking in the fridge, the same fridge as your spouse or uh, another family member, and you're looking at the fridge and you can't see the item that the other person has seen. Guilty. (laughs) But it goes beyond the fridge. You know, you could be sitting in the same meeting at work and you're looking at the same problem, but someone sees a different solution. You can be looking at the same textbook, but someone can come up with a different answer. We can be looking at the same part of scripture and land somewhere different. And that's because what we see affects what we do. As we step into 2022 as a church, I wonder, what do you see? As we step into the outworking of the the God-sized dream that our lead pastor Mike kind of took us through a little bit in Vision Sunday last week, what do you see, especially in two of our strategic priorities of expand and multiply? Expand being one church, many gatherings, and pushing towards multiple locations. What do you see? Do you see possibilities and opportunities, or do you see something else? When we look at the strategic priority of multiply, of where we raise and release leaders, what do you see? Do you see a leadership academy that can thrive and succeed? Or do you see something else? What do you see? Because what we see affects what we do. You know, I remember back in 2015, God speaking to me uh, about a particular need that was in the area in the east of Melbourne where we were residing uh, at that time. And this need was around a few well-being related issues that students were experiencing. And I felt like God showed me a picture of how it could be different, how it could be different for students in this area and how our church, our youth ministry at the time could be like uh, a significant vehicle and a voice to address these needs in our area. 
And I remember sitting on what I had seen for like a couple of weeks. You know, you're like, wow, this is, this is a bit out there. This is something we haven't done before. So I kind of just sat on it, but you kind of sit on something for a couple of weeks. You kind of go, okay, I need to tell someone. I'm that type of guy. So I share with a handful of people on my team, hey, this is what the Lord is showing me. This is what I'm seeing, uh, seeing what's possible in our area, how we could meet some significant needs in our area. And our team agreed that there was something on it. So we explored it. We started to dream about how we could outwork what we were seeing. So we came up with this idea of doing a schools tour where we'd meet uh, needs in our area, we'd do seminars, and we'd roll it out. Got the, the package all together, picked the need. There's so many needs, but we picked one we're going to focus on, and we got the word out. But it all started with what we could see. And today we're going to look at a community that had to process what 12 leaders were saying to them based on what they had seen. And based on what they were hearing about their future, they needed to decide, is this something we can do or is this something we can't do? You know, this story goes down in the book of Numbers. If you've got your Bibles, I'd love for you to turn there with me. Numbers 13. At the time, Moses is the leader of this community known as the Israelite people. And they're looking forward to the future. They're looking at where are we physically going to reside? So Moses assembles a team that represents each of the tribes in this area. It ends up being 12 people. And they were going to be sent out to scout the land. And as they kind of get sent out to scout the land, Moses gives them some clear instructions. All right, this is the route that I want you to go. This is what I want you to look for. I want you to look for like, what's the land like? Is it vacant? Is it occupied? Is there any, you know, produce there? What's the soil like to grow? Really good due diligence questions before you uproot and move everyone to another place. So these 12 people, they go and they scout the land for 40 days and come back and give the report to the community. And that's where we join Numbers 13, uh, verse 26. We're going to read along in the message translation today. This is what it says. They presented themselves before Moses and Aaron and the whole congregation of the people of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. They reported to the whole congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Then they told them the story of their trip. We went to the land to which you sent us, and oh, it does flow with milk and honey. Just look at this fruit. The only thing is that the people who live there are fierce. Their cities are huge and well fortified. Worse yet, we saw the descendants of a giant, a neck. The Amalekites are spread across out in Negev. The Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites hold the hill country. And the Canaanites have established themselves on the Mediterranean Sea along the Jordan. Verse 30, Caleb interrupted them, called for silence before Moses and said, let's go up and take the land now. We can do it. The others said, we can't attack those people. They are way stronger than, than we are. They, they spread scary rumors among the people of Israel. They said, we scouted out the land from one end to the other. It's a land that swallows people up whole. Everybody we saw was huge. Skip down and alongside them we felt like grasshoppers and they looked down on us as if we were grasshoppers. So from this story I just want to explore how can we carry a spirit that says that we can over we can't. So let's look at both sides. The we can side which represents the two and the we can't side that represents the 10 in this story. So let's look at what can lead us to carry a spirit that says we can't when we move towards the future. The first thing is this. The thing that can stop us is the voices of other people, where what people say impacts what we see. You see, we have this community that's gathered to hear this report from the 12 that have been sent out. And 10 have a bias to a negative report. Come back to Numbers uh, 13, 27. You know, this group of 10, they kind of start with the good stuff, like you would in a report, but the good stuff only represents 5% of this report. They're like, yeah, here's the good stuff that's sweet. Check out the grapes. Hello. Look at what we can make with this. But then the next 
95% is why this won't work. What are the challenges? What is the opposition awaiting if we move towards this land? They use phrases like, the only thing is, which is like a gentle way of moving from the positive to the negative. Then they kind of escalate it by using phrases like worse yet to reinforce the point that going to this land is a bad idea. And here's what I know. When the voices of other people outline the worst case scenario or why something can't work, it will impact what we see and what we will do. So for us as a community of faith, it's important for us to pay attention to the voices that are shaping us, shaping who we are, shaping what we believe, influencing what we do as a community. And it's worth asking this question as we, as we look at our future, looking to what we can move towards. Who is the loudest voice in our life? Who is the loudest voice shaping what we believe about our church and about our future? The second thing that can impact the spirit that we carry is when we believe that we can't. And when we believe we can't, then it makes it hard to believe that We can. And sometimes, you know, the biggest mountain to conquer when it comes to stepping into uncharted territory is the doubt that we come up face to face with along the journey. When we believe we can't do something, it's hard to move forward and to participate in it. So think about this community, the Israelite people. They're faced with this tension moving into this land. Can we or can't we? We have 10 leaders who we respect, we look up to, saying we can't. And we have two leaders saying that we can. The 10 are outlining all the practical reasons why, why this will not work. It won't work because of who already resides there in Numbers 13, verse 31. And when we experience doubt, it's hard to believe that we can. You know, I remember the process of the schools tour coming into being. You've put the nice little promotional pack together. You've sent it out. To schools, we set the goal for uh, 10 schools to be part of this uh, initial project. And uh, we were really excited about that. We believed that God was in it and uh, we started to get the word out. We picked up two to three schools pretty quick, which we expected to do so because we had prior relationship with them. If we didn't, there'd probably be questions pretty early on. But over the next six weeks, as we're reaching out to more schools in our community, we're just getting no's, knockbacks, no one returning calls or great idea we'll get back to you. And that was the narrative for the next six weeks. And you know what? When you experience constant pushback or constant shutdowns or rejections, it can lead you to a place where you question, where you doubt. And we start asking those questions because it's like, we thought this was God's idea. We thought God was in this, but we are nowhere near what we thought God was doing. So we're sitting around going like, Are we seeing what God's seeing? Or have we put our own lens on this? Have we put our own agenda? So we started to question and doubt. And you know what? You can move to a a place to question and doubt when things aren't going to plan. When things aren't going the way that you want, you thought, or expected. Yet here's what I know. When we end up believing we can't do something, It's hard to believe we can. So I wonder maybe as you read through the God-sized dream, you hear and ponder things like expand and multiply, hear about one church, many gatherings, multiple locations, a leadership academy. When you hear about all these things, what is your response? Is it one of, yes, we can? Or is it no, no? We can't. And if it's a yes, we can, why do you believe we can? (laughs) It's worth understanding what lies underneath of why we believe it can happen and why is it possible. But on the flip side, if we believe that we can't, why do we believe that we can't? What's the thing that's sitting underneath that could be generating doubt, concern, or even questions? So if there are two things that can impact what we see and lead us to a place where we could go, you know what? 
we can't. What are the things that can lead us to a place where we can actually say we can? What are the lessons we can actually learn from the two, Caleb and Joshua? I think the first thing that we can do is this, is have confidence. Have confidence in whom we are connected to. Have confidence in the one who's actually leading and guiding us. Have confidence in whom God is and in his consistent nature of turning up and being faithful time and time again. You know, you read throughout scripture of God's faithfulness. You read of his activity of turning up time and time again. And I'm sure in this room and in the rooms that are joining us online right now, there would be people that would be able to point to a time where God was faithful, where God came through, where God came through on what he said and what he promised to you over your life time and time again. And we can have confidence because of who we are connected to. And when we have confidence in who we're connected to, we can stand up. We can speak up about the things that God has deposited in us. Even though, think about these people that are in this uh, situation, the Israelite people hearing this report. Think about Caleb and Joshua. Ten other people have given a negative report. They are saying the opposite of what you say and believe. And even though everything is pointing to a different narrative, Caleb steps up to the plate and starts a new narrative in verse 30 when he says this, let's go and take the land now. We can do it. You know, he can speak like that because of the confidence that he has in God. He has confidence that God will come through. He has seen God come through before, so he can come through again. God is not a God of one-hit wonders. It's not like he does it once and goes, you know, a little high five, God bless you, send you on your way. No, he's a God of faithfulness. He's a God that follows through on his promises to us. And this community has already experienced the faithfulness of God. He led the Israelites out of Egypt, a land of oppression and hardship. Surely he can lead them to another place flowing with milk and honey where life is going to be the best it could ever be. Yet I wonder, where's our confidence? If Caleb can have confidence to stand up and to speak up and go against the narrative of we can't and actually say, you know what, I believe we can. And I believe we can because of whom we're connected to. I wonder where our confidence is today. Is our confidence in God or is our confidence in ourselves? The second thing is that we need to expect challenges along the way. Expect challenges that will question, do we truly believe in what we see? Put yourself in the situation of the two. You are the minority. The rest of the community is hearing a different narrative to you. Even though those 12 people all spied out the land at the same time. It wasn't like, you know, you group of 10, go a week ahead. The other two, you kind of follow along a week later. No, they were there at the same time, checking out the same space. So the community hears this report. You jump over to Numbers chapter 14 and you hear how the community is responding to these confusing reports that are kind of flying around. And the community is responding by being in uproar. They are complaining, they are grumbling, they are upset at Moses, they are not happy that, they, that he would be leading them towards this place that the ten is saying is actually no good at all. Matter of fact, in the message translation, it, it, it implies that there's a leadership spill on the cards. They're looking for a new leader. And you know what? When people don't see what you see, it's a challenge because they will tell you why you can't instead of why you can. Yet even with this all going on, uproar, opposition, there's gossip going around the camp, Caleb speaks up again. Numbers 14, 6 to 9 in the message translation. The land we walk through and scout it out is a very good land, very good indeed. If God is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land, a land that flows, as they say, with milk and honey. And he, and he will give it to us. Just don't rebel against God. Don't be afraid of those people. Why? We'll have them for lunch. They have no protection and God is on our side. Don't be afraid of them. You know, I think it's in these moments of challenge, it asks the question, will we turn up again? 
Will we turn up again? Will we speak up again? Will we speak out what we see and believe God can do? Because you know what? I, I, I believe too many people get inspired by God. You know, we have these moments with God. He inspires us around what's possible. He puts a dream. He puts a vision. He puts an idea in people's hearts individually. He puts uh, dreams in churches corporately. And people get these inspirations from God. But early on, people can speak up and say, you know what? You just can't. And sometimes we get knocked down by the voice of the critic. We get knocked down by the voice of the skeptic that we decide to give up based on the words of other people instead of the words of God. But what if we didn't let the words of other people? What if we didn't let the words of the critic? What if we didn't let the words of the skeptic get in the way of what God has said and what God is doing in us as a community? And I sense as a church, there is things that the Lord wants to bring back to life. There's been words, promises, prophecies spoken over this house that need to come back out of the closet. They need to get that fresh wind kind of blown on them. And you need to believe again because that word, that promise you put on on the bench because someone said you can't. But I believe today the Lord wants to impart a spirit that says that we can. He wants to awaken what you have put away and bring it back in 2022. We can. We can. The third thing is that we can have a clear call for others. You know, what was deposited in the two wasn't just meant for two people. It was actually meant for everyone. So Caleb puts his case forward around how God is for them. We just read it, Numbers 14, 6 to 9. But it's an invitation for them to step into what they saw. And I sense, church, as we talk about the God-sized dream, as we step into our future together, I believe there's an invitation for every single one of us to be part of the story to step in with a spirit that says, you know what? If God is in it, I believe we can. If God is for us, who can be against us? That we carry a spirit that says we can over we can't. To be people and a community that says, you know what? We're going to walk in confidence in what he calls us to do. We're going to expect times that are going to be challenging and at times hard. We're going to call others into the story. We're going to call others into the invitation. We're going to be people that pay attention to the voices that are shaping us. And we're also going to be aware of the doubts that could pop up along the way. Yet if there's only one thing you remember out of everything that we speak about to date, when we speak into our future, I want you to remember this one thing, and it's this. What we see affects what we do. What we see affects what we do. So let me ask you again. What do you see? What do you see in Clovey right now What do you see in Clovey's future? What do you see? So what happened to Caleb and to Joshua? You know, the minority, they got to see what God had for them. They got to experience what they saw. You read, you know, it's a bumpy ride. It's turbulent. God turns up. God judges the Israelite people, but doesn't judge Joshua and Caleb because they represented a different spirit. Fast forward time, 40 years after Moses, Joshua walks into that very land that was promised. But you know what? It all started when they gave a report around what they could see. Yet I wonder what's possible for us when we give a report of what we see. 2022 and beyond. I wonder what is possible for us personally, but also corporately as a church community. When I think about my own life, I think of the numerous amount of times where God has continued to turn up. I use the school store as as an example of, you know what? It had moments of doubt when it didn't look like it was going to plan. 
but days out from it, it starting, it, it took a turn in, in the a positive where all of a sudden the narrative changed from no to yes. And we exceeded our, our goal and our expectations on that first tour. We went from like two or three schools to over 10 in the last few days. And through this uh, initiative in our local co community back in the outer east of Melbourne, it ended up gaining access to 43 schools in our local area where we became the voice that shaped youth culture in our area. Schools would ring us when things would happen in their school community saying, hey, could you come and help? But it all started when we had a dream about what we saw. What's possible for us, hey? 2022. What's possible for us? Because I love the stuff that God's done before. I love that. But I eagerly await for what he wants to continue to do moving forward. I want to continue to see him do great work here. In this church, in your life, I eagerly await to see more activity of God. So what do you see? What do you see? How about we stand together and we're going to pray together. Holy Spirit, I, I thank you that you are here. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are so available and accessible to us. And I pray, Father God, as we lean into you today, I pray, Lord, that you would be stirring our heart for what's possible. God, may we catch your heart and your agenda for this house, for what you want to do in it and through it. God, I thank you that this place is more than just a building, that this is a place where people's lives are changed and transformed, and then they go and change and transform people's lives wherever they go. God, thank you for speaking into the heart of our church around strategic priorities of where you wanna take this place, the church to walk into in 2030. God, I pray, Lord, that it'd be more than just good ideas or nice graphic design in a booklet, but actually what we see and experience as a church community. Give us a spirit that says we can. Give us a spirit like you gave Caleb and Joshua amongst challenge, hardship, maybe even opposition, that we would still stand and say, yes, we can. Give us the faith to believe that you can. And you know why we're in this just posture of response and focusing our mind on Him. I'd love just to pray for people. Maybe when you hear about things like the God-sized dream or anything about casting vision into the future, it probably could bring up some things around skepticism, around, oh, that's nice, but that's not for us. Maybe your default is why we can't. And maybe the thing that's influencing that under the surface is your doubts. Maybe your questions. Or maybe when you think about the future, it's the voices of maybe some other people in your life and world that tell you why it won't work. And I just sense for us, if you resonate with any of those things, for us to actually surrender the afresh to God, to refresh us with a mindset and a spirit that believes that all things are possible with God. So if you're here just with every eye closed, and if you're honest with yourself, you would know, you know what? Doubts, skepticism, maybe the voices of other people are influencing my spirit to say, we can't. They say, God, would you give me a new spirit? Help me to see what you see so I can believe that we can. If that's you, just where you are, I just want you to place your hands out in front of you, just like you're receiving a gift. Just a posture of surrender and openness to God. Thank you so much. 
Because I get it, you hear about big dreams, big visions, tasks that seem crazy and impossible. And it can seem like that in the natural, but if God's in it, there's something about the supernatural power of God that can just move things past the natural. And so Father God, with hands lifted before you, wherever you are, even online, hands before you and say, Lord Jesus, would you give us a fresh spirit that says we can't? God, we bring our doubts. We bring even maybe some of our bad experiences that we've had in maybe other ministry environments or maybe even here, God. We bring them to you. God, we, we bring maybe the voices of other people that have got in our ear, that have actually shifted what we believe. God, we want to catch your heart. We want to catch your agenda. And we say, Holy Spirit, would you speak afresh to us? Would a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit come upon us where we believe that we can? We believe that things are not impossible or too far-fetched for you, God. Give us a spirit like Caleb and Joshua in the face of hardship, opposition and challenge that we could stand up and speak up and say, yes, we can. Jesus, I thank You that You are the one that builds the church. You are the one that takes ground, that You wanna extend Your kingdom here on earth. And God, we're just gonna pray into these two prayers. I'd love for you to pray where you are. You know, I just feel a sense just to pray into this area of expansion as a church. That this is a day for us to press into new ground, new territory. I'd love for you to just to start praying where you are. Maybe even start to pray verbally. God, we just pray right now, Lord, into this strategic priority of um, expansion. God, we thank You that You want us to be a church with many services, many gatherings. And God, that You want to increase our reach and influence. And we believe, God, that You want to see people's lives and changed and transformed, not for our glory, not for our credit, but for Your glory and Your credit. You want to extend Your kingdom here on earth. God, we want to see people come to faith. We want to see new ground and new territory taken for the kingdom of God. We want to see households changed and transformed, businesses changed and transformed. We want to see schools impacted for your gospel. We want to see people um, being set free from pain and addiction in the name of Jesus. And I pray, God, that you would use this house, that you would use the people in this house and the people that are to come to expand it in Jesus' name. Give us eyes to see where you want us to go. Give us eyes to where you want us to plant, where you want us to build. And God, we pray, would you gather the people in the name of Jesus. Gather the people that need to go. Gather the people to be part of what you want to do here on earth. God, I think you've got so much more for us to do than just sit in a seat week in and week out. You've put us on the planet to extend your kingdom here. God, let us catch your heart. Let us catch your agenda in Jesus' name. Come on, church. Let's just start to pray. Pray where you are. Believe that God can do an impossible thing, that God can move, that He can take what we think we can't and we can turn it into we can in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on. Come on, let's just start to sing. Let's start to worship. Let's start to believe that God can move in a powerful way in this place. Come on. Come on. Come on, let's lift our hands. Let's lift our hands to heaven. Let's worship Him with everything we got. Come on. Let's worship Him with a spirit that says, you know what? Yes, we can. In Jesus' name.